Welcome back to Logic 101. I'm William Spaniel, and the topic for today is nested proofs. In other words, we're going to be doing proofs within proofs, or if I may borrow a meme, it's like, yo dog, I heard you liked conditional proofs, so I got you conditional proofs for your conditional proofs. Or a meme-free version of this is that you can nest conditional proofs or proofs by contradiction within each other. So if you're working on a proof by contradiction, if it is useful for you, you can start a new proof by contradiction within the existing proof by contradiction. Or if you're working on a conditional proof, you can start a new conditional proof within the original conditional proof. And you can actually go back and forth between these two as well. You can have a proof by contradiction inside of a conditional proof. And to see why this might be useful, let's look at an example. Imagine that we were trying to prove the tautology P implies Q and not Q implies R. All right, well, given what we talked about last time, if we're looking at tautologies, that means we have to start off by either having a conditional proof or a proof by contradiction to give us something to work with. We don't have any premises here to start off with. Well, the main operator of the statement is a conditional, and one of the tips that I've given you before is that usually, most of the time, if you're working with conditional statements, you should go with conditional proofs. So let's go ahead and start off that way. Let's go with line one as being the antecedent of the conditional statement, that's P, as an assumption for a conditional proof, and now we are ultimately trying to show that Q and not Q implies R. Well, that's another conditional statement. So ordinarily, what we would be doing there is by trying to prove a conditional statement, we would want to have another conditional proof. So in other words, we would, as our second line, have the antecedent of the new conditional statement that we're trying to work with here. And that is Q and not Q implies R. So the antecedent there is just Q and not Q. And then if we were to be going along with this, we would want to try to show the consequent R is true to close this conditional proof. As it turns out, I worked through this and it was really, really difficult. So I was struggling for the longest time to figure out how to do this by conditional proof. I ended up having to come back to it a couple of days later to actually think of this through and figure it out. And so here's a lesson within a lesson. Sometimes if things don't work out the way that you want them to, even if it's the best advice, then you should go with something else that might work. And that something else that might work is to not do this as a conditional proof, but rather to try this out as a proof by contradiction instead. So let's instead of having a conditional proof nested within a conditional proof to go with a proof by contradiction. So you'll notice that on their second line, we have a further indentation. And this is going to be important because it's going to determine what is being nested within what. And what we're going to be doing here is to try to show that the consequent of the overall statement, that is Q and not Q implies R, has to be true. And we're going to do that by assuming that it's false. So there we go. Let's try to work with this now and see what we can do with it. Well, we have a negation on the outside. And a good way of removing negations is to use De Morgan's. But we can only use De Morgan's on OR statements and AND statements, not these conditionals. But we've seen this before. We know how to get rid of conditionals. We can use conditional exchange to switch that out. So we can negate the antecedent of the conditional statement. And then morphing line two into line three, we get not, not Q and not Q, or R. Now we can apply De Morgan's to it. And if we do that, we put that negation through the brackets. So we have not, not, Q and not Q. Then we flip the disjunction into a conjunction, and then we distribute that negation one more time to the R, and so we have not R. Well, remember in a proof by contradiction, what's the goal of a proof by contradiction? The goal of a proof by contradiction is to get a line that has a statement and the negation of that statement alone by itself with a conjunction, alone by themselves with a conjunction. Well, we have something that looks very similar to that already. We have this Q and not Q right there in line four. It's kind of mashed together with some other things. So if we can figure out a way to isolate that, we would have our contradiction and we could close this proof by contradiction. You might be able to see how we can do that, how we can just get Q and not Q by themselves. We can erase this not R to start off with via simplification. Right? We have two things that are both true, so each one of them individually is true, which gives us not not Q and not Q. 
And then through double negation, obviously, we get rid of the, well, the double negation, and we're left with Q and not Q. Well, this means that we can wrap up our nested proof here, our proof by contradiction, because we have this contradiction. So we know that the thing that we originally assumed, that can't be true, its negation needs to be true, and so we're left with what we have right there. We have that consequent that we were look looking for from before, Q and not Q implies R. And now that allows us to wrap up this entire proof, because remember, the conditional proof's goal was to show that the consequent was true, given that the antecedent P was true, and we've just done that using our nested proof by contradiction. So we can wrap up this proof like that, and we are done. P implies Q and not Q implies R. So to wrap things up here, a quick reminder going back to our original introductions for proof by contradiction and conditional proofs. You cannot use lines from closed proofs, but you can use any line from an open proof regardless of the level. And that's relatively easy to follow the don't use lines from closed proofs part when you're doing a single indented proof at a time, but when you're nesting conditional or proofs by contradiction together, this can become a little bit more complicated. So one thing that some professors will recommend, and isn't a bad idea if you're still getting a hang of this, is in this proof right here, for example, once you close off your proof, in this case the nested proof, that proof by contradiction, to either cross out the lines, or in this case because I'm using a computer, I grade out those lines to remind myself that I can't use any of those lines anymore. Those things are sewed away, they're gone, we can never use them again because we have closed off that proof. When we got to line 7 and we said, well, through lines 2 through 6 we have a proof by contradiction, closing that proof off means that we cannot touch any of those lines ever again. Here it was actually really easy, we didn't need to use anything from those lines, or we wouldn't want to use anything from those lines because we were essentially done at that point, but if we had to do some more stuff in lines 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so forth, we couldn't go back to lines 2 through 6. So that's something you need to keep an eye on, and if it's helpful, cross them out gently. You can't erase them entirely, of course, because whoever is grading these assignments needs to be able to see what you are doing in those lines, but give some sort of reminder to yourself that you can no longer touch those proofs, or rather touch those lines anymore, because the proof by contradiction, in this case, or a conditional proof in a different case, is now closed. All right, so that wraps up nested proofs. And I think what I'm going to do in the next lecture is to give you an idea of how I sit down and figure out these proofs, right? I gave in this example uh, a situation where I started off by doing a conditional proof and, you know, kind of got myself a little bit confused and ended up having to go through proof by contradiction. And so usually what I'm doing in these videos is actually a, a polished version of me figuring out ahead of time how to do these things and then showing you the right answer once I know the right answer. It might actually be useful for you to see my thought process when I haven't seen a problem before and I'm trying to prove some sort of statement that's been given to me. So that's what we're going to be looking at in the next lecture. Hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you next time. Take care.